I want to do an experiment. Okay, this is my this is my world now. This is my country. Well, half of you are going to be my country. This is the country of Keltonia. I am the government. I have the taxing authority. I also have a standing army, courts, prisons, and so forth. Half of you are my domestic private sector. You're the households and the businesses in the nation of Keltonia. You're all subject to a tax in this great country. And so, let's say 200 Keltonis. You have to pay me 200 Keltonis this year, okay? What does that mean? If we record this on balance sheets, it means now you're in debt to me, right? I have an accounts receivable, I have taxes due, you have a debt, and I just reduced your net worth. Now, let's settle the obligation. Go ahead and pay your taxes. Sorry, you don't have any till the You can't! <laughs> What do you mean you can't? You can't because I haven't spent any Keltonis into existence yet. The money to pay taxes comes from government spending. I'll hire some of you, you'll build roadways for me, and I'll pay you Keltonis. Then you can pay your taxes. Okay? I'm gonna pay 500. Now you're going to pay your taxes. See, I, cr I credited your account. I gave you the 500, but now let's settle up. Taxes are paid. What are your net financial assets? 300 Keltonis. This is a simple, fundamental accounting truth. This is not gimmickry. This is not a theory. This is a matter of accounting. It is a fact. Okay? When the government spends more than it takes back in taxes, you end up with the difference. You, the non-government, right? It went somewhere. You got it, right? My deficit is your surplus, or my red ink is your black ink. Why don't you buy some imports? This is the foreign sector you might decide to spend part of your income buying goods and services produced abroad. You can do that. You can import from them as long as they want Keltonis, which they'll want as long as you produce something of value in your country that they'll want to exchange Keltonis for later, right? So let's say you spend 200 buying great things from the foreign lands. Go ahead. So now where are we? Who's holding Keltonis? We have three sectors. The government sector, the domestic private sector, and the foreign sector, the rest of the world. Where are they? You've got 100, you've got 200, and I'm the source of all that. I have the minus 300. My deficit is the non-government surplus. Right? The world as a whole is a closed system. Every financial payment comes from somewhere and it goes somewhere. There are flows and there are stocks. Payments accumulate. They pool up. If we stop the clock at any point in time, we can figure out where they are. Right? Those blue lines, I don't know how easy they are for you to see, but those blue lines represent leakages. That is the spending of money that doesn't return to the domestic producers in the economy. They don't like that. They want the income to come back to them as revenue. But when you buy from the rest of the world, it doesn't stay here. And when you pay it to me, it doesn't stay here. And when it leaks out in the form of saving, it doesn't stay and circulate here. So all of those types of leakages, buying imports, paying taxes, and saving, have to be offset by different injections into the spending stream or your economy will contract. If you get more injected in than is leaking out, your economy will grow. But where do those injections come from? One source would be them buying from you. Another source would be me buying from you. 
And another source would be you investing, borrowing and investing in new plant and equipment. That's investment. So injections, leakages, you have to figure out which one in some total is bigger, and then you can figure out what the impact on the economy is going to be. Government plays an important role both as a source of a leakage and a source of an injection, right? The U.S. is a net importer. We buy more goods and services from the rest of the world than they buy from us. This results in a trade deficit in the U.S and a surplus in other countries. This can cause domestic unemployment for you folks, and it can cause the domestic private sector to lose net financial assets. You saw that some of theirs went over there. Unless the government compensates with a deficit, unless it compensates by cutting your taxes or increasing its own spending to replenish whatever might be leaking out to the foreign sector, right? If you leave here tonight and you take just one thing with you to convince your friends and neighbors, which we hope you will do, take this picture, okay? This is really powerful. I've used this um, over a number of years and I can't tell you the success that I've had because seeing is believing. Right? A picture's worth a thousand words and all that. What you see in this picture is, the first of all, you recognize right away that you're looking at a mirror image. You could fold the top half down and it would exactly line up with the bottom half, right? The blue lines, it's not important that you can read every number, just understand that the blue line is the private sector's surplus. That's how much you have. When it's above zero, that's good for you because you have a surplus. When it's below zero, you are in deficit, right? You're spending more than your income. What you see, and this goes back to 1950 or so, is that the private sector lives above the zero line. That's where we are. That's where we operate. That's where we belong. When we have ventured below the zero line, things have gone very badly, okay? The government, the red, lives below the zero line almost always in deficit. The green is the foreign sector. And there was a time in the US when, when we ran small trade surpluses against the rest of the world, but we haven't done that for decades. Okay, we run trade deficits now, and our deficits are their surpluses. So that green above the zero line, that's theirs, right? That's you spending more buying things from them than they spend buying things from you. If you want to remain in the black above zero and you're going to have a trade deficit, the only way you stay above zero is if my deficit, the government deficit, is bigger than the deficit you run with the rest of the world. The only way. Okay, so as long as the U.S. has trade deficits, we have to have government deficits or you folks are going to be in negative territory. Okay? All right, China is not our banker. I think Warren already dealt with this um, really effectively. I'm gonna to try to move quickly through this. China ends up holding US dollars because they're net exporters to the US. We buy more from them than they buy from us. We pay them, they have the dollars. And rather than holding those dollars in a checking account at the Fed, China prefers to convert lots of those dollars into bonds. That's part of what we, in daily language, refer to as the national debt. China buys treasury bonds, right? Treasury bonds are functionally savings accounts at the Fed. I could choose to sell you some bonds as well. You can buy these. They pay interest. What you're holding doesn't. Would you like this? Sure. Sure. She's no dummy. This is my checking account. It gives me nothing. Give me interest. There we go. Okay, now she has the bonds. I issued some debt, but this in no way burdens me, and it in no way burdens you or your grandchildren either, okay? 